Hey y'all, so I just wanted to talk to you guys about addiction today. Um, that's something that I've struggled with in the past and it's something that God has brought me through in this season of life for me. Um, specifically, it started when I was younger. I don't know if any of you guys know much about codependency, but I am a very codependent person. So I've seen a pattern throughout my life that if it's not one thing, it's another. If it's not sports, it's friends. If it's not food, it's drugs. If it's not drugs, it's alcohol. If it's not that, it's something else. And once I really started to see that and God started working with me on that, it was easier to get healing and to fight those feelings and gain the real control back in my life. And just recently, um, I think the season that God has really brought me into and really healed me and completely removed the feelings that I had were earlier this year. Like this has been one of the hardest years for me spiritually. But um, my normal go-to in situations of uh, trauma or, you know, stress, tragedy, any of that would be to smoke weed or drink a bunch of alcohol, um, do something to just make myself feel good. And when I found out my grandma had cancer earlier this year, I had those temptations and urges and I had to fight them every single day. It took months and months and now God has finally set me free. It's been truly, truly amazing uh, what he's done in all of this. I have never felt so free in my whole life. And I have a couple verses for you guys that have helped me in my time of weakness. Here they are. So the first verse that I have for you that has to deal with what I've gone through is 2 Corinthians 12. Um, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. Some more about like my past with addiction is I started with weed <laughs> and it went into molly and ecstasy and other psychedelic mushrooms, all of that. And that was really um, when I opened the door to let the enemy even more have a foothold in my life. And it's something that I don't regret because it's brought me to where I have been, but I understand the severity. And what I did was really, really like crazy. You know, I sold drugs. I was just a really bad person. Um, I was harming myself. I didn't care. I just was doing whatever I wanted. And I thought that was actual freedom. But real freedom is taking the stand and having the strength of the Lord upon you. I thought that having freedom was doing this or doing that and not having rules and not having set boundaries. But guys, those rules and boundaries aren't there to make us not have fun. They're there to protect us, protect us from sin, protect us from hurt, from consequences. And sadly, I got to experience some of those consequences. I'm very thankful that I never got arrested or in trouble with the law with all of that. And I believe the Lord really protected me, even though I didn't know him, but I, did have consequences with other things. I just want to say too that I have known the Lord for about six years and I still stumbled multiple times. I thought that I was set free completely, but I was still holding on to control um, of my addiction and I was still holding on to those feelings that getting high or getting drunk gave me and it was a false sense of security and a false sense of freedom from my emotions and everything and I just want to say that listen to 
what your body and your spirit is telling you. If, if you're feeling upset, there's a reason. That's why God gave us emotions. That's why he gives us a memory. That's why he gives us these things is to help us understand what's going on around us and help process those things. So don't ignore them. Don't drown those feelings. Don't drown and suppress what's going on. Once I started doing that and I, I just, I was stunned in my growth with the Lord. I was stunned in my personal growth just as a human being. I was stunned spiritually. And it wasn't until this last time that I really was able to step away from that and see the truth. And maybe I needed to learn that. You know, maybe if the Lord had delivered me from my addiction sooner, that it would have been not as grand and it wouldn't have been as meaningful i it wouldn't have stuck it wouldn't give me the motivation to talk about it with you guys um it wouldn't give me the the sense of freedom that i feel now and the complete and utter reliance on the lord for the strength to get through that and yes i still do think about doing things the enemy still does throw stuff in my face the enemy still does love to tempt me in my mind and in situations, but I just have to remember that truth and rely on the Lord to bring me through that. And no, I'm not perfect, but I still haven't allowed myself to get to that point where I succumb to my addiction again. So just the Lord is amazing and I just hope that this really helps you guys. It's really hard for us to do something at this capacity. Um, not only is it physical but it's spiritual a lot of things in my family come from generations and generations of passing down yucky stuff so you know it's not always your fault like you were sometimes born into stuff and it's your job to work with the lord and navigate and learn how to deal with those things and be a light in the truth and a salt of the earth to people who are just like you and I who struggle with different things. Um, I know that when I was younger, it was really easy. I didn't know the Lord. Um, I was always raised kind of very interestingly. Uh, my parents were Mormon for a while, and then I didn't really go to church or anything. I thought church was for people who were perfect, and I was far from that. Uh, my family was very broken. My parents were divorced. I lived in a very abusive household with my mom and stepdad. It just really wasn't great. So how could Jesus or a God that's perfect love somebody so broken like me? Um, and it was easy to buy into those lies of the enemy. Um, and it set me down a road. Um, I remember when I was 18 saying that the Bible was a stupid book that's outdated and I had never read it. So <laughs> here I am today and the Lord has redeemed me and I'm so thankful for his grace and that it is sufficient enough for me to overcome my temptations and my addiction. Um, I have had a huge past with weed or marijuana and it's something that I can't even like do. It's just it'll send me in a spiral and um, working with the Lord on how to control myself and break through that and find healthy alternatives to trauma, stress, all of that. Um, this year has been extremely stressful for me between moving twice across the country, losing jobs, um, grandma getting cancer, just it was one of the craziest trials of my whole entire adult life and what I can say and what I can take from it um, so far in this amazing journey that I have had is God has taken me to a level of understanding of knowing him deeper and relying really on him and it's it's amazing I'm so thankful for that. I really can see like when I read the verses in the Bible, I see like what they were actually talking about. You know, there's <laughs> just so many things that come to life when you're actually experiencing it. And you can see your strength 
through God when you're in suffering and trials. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's a strength that only comes from the Lord. You know, I'm so grateful that even a sinner like me, that I was able to be saved and used and continuously work with the Lord every single day to do something. Um, I really encourage you, if you're struggling with addiction, please reach out to somebody. It doesn't have to be a church. Please reach out to a friend. Please reach out to a support group. Um, please do yourself that. Set yourself free from the bondage. It's not worth it. You know, you will do whatever type of addiction it is and it'll steal time, money, resources, your life from you. It sucks dealing with pain and suffering and trials, but I promise you, if you do it sober and with the Lord, you will grow so much faster and you won't stay in that level of sadness and pain and just numbing yourself. Like it will truly set you free. It will have people asking you questions like, oh, how are you doing this? And when you get to share your experience and how the Lord is working in your life, it truly can change other people's lives. It's wonderful. I'm just so thankful. Again, especially after this Thanksgiving season, um, being able to stand, well, sit here in front of you guys today and just talk about this openly. Um, you know, God took me, someone who was so broken from abuse, um, addictions, you know, um, so many different sins and he still loves me and he's redeemed me and he's called me his own, his child. I'm loved and just knowing that is just so beautiful. It makes me feel so good and I, I want to share that with the world. And if you guys have any questions, please reach out to myself or Christ Center Girls. We'd love to talk more deeply with you about anything that you're struggling with. Just know that you're not alone. The enemy wants you to feel alone and like you're the only one struggling, but let's face it, everybody <clears throat> on social media or in life is very good at hiding things um, behind closed doors or just not telling the truth of what's really going on in your life. So. Let's make 2020 a year where we speak the truth, we get help, we stand together, we unite, we take on these addictions or sins head force with the Lord and together and help each other through that. There's no shame in getting help. There's no shame in having problems. That's why we are a community and that's why we need the Lord so much. We can't rely on our own strength. We can't do that. It's just, it's not how we were made. And when we try to walk it alone, the enemy isolates us and we're easily able to fall back into old habits. And building a good community, um, doing scriptures, having a foundation that you can keep building on will really help you be successful. And I just wanna say that this is just coming on me today. Um, somebody who will watch this, um, you're very loved, no matter what your parents have done, no matter what people say about you, you're loved, those things aren't true. The Lord loves you and sees you for where you really are, not what your situation, your past, or any of that. And just know that uh, the Lord doesn't have like the same time as us so he can wait time isn't a huge rush for him if you keep stumbling or you feel like rushed and pressured that's not from the lord um, the lord is gentle the lord is peaceful he is just but the enemy wants us to feel the rush and the pressure and the condemnation and the shame they want us to feel like we can't do it but the Lord, he's not on a time frame. He just wants you and he wants to work with you and he wants to be a part of your life. 
So thank you so much for listening to this today. If you have any questions, please reach out. We'll do a poll, um, a poll and some questions. Um, I can share more about my story. I'm totally fine with that. I just, I'm just letting the Lord speak through me right now. So I hope you guys have a great Saturday. You are loved, you're worthy, you're chosen, and you will be set free.